Hi, my name is Dr. Erin Daniil with Rejuvenate Life Chiropractic. If you like my videos, please like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find me at rejuvenatelifechiro.com as well. Uh, I love to answer questions or make more videos for you, so please do um, any or all of those things. Uh, today I'm talking about my series on healthy ways to lose weight and uh, we're going to talk about the paleo diet. Okay, according to the Mayo Clinic, um, on an article that is called, what is, what is it and why is it so po popular? You know, paleo, what is it, why is it so popular? And I quote, a paleo diet typically includes lean meats, fish, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Foods that in the past could be obtained by hunting and gathering, a paleo diet limits foods that became common when farming that emerged about 10,000 years ago. These foods include dairy products, legumes, and grains, so that's what we're avoiding. Then another article by Stephanie Butler, updated on May 23rd of 2019, uh, titled Paleo, What Prehistoric Man Actually Ate, and she states, that the paleo is new, newly popular in health circles. The paleo diet was created back in the 1970s by gastroenterologist Walter Vogelin, Vogtlin, V-O-E-G-T-L-I-N. Okay, so what are we talking about with paleo? We're talking about eating foods that would be from more hunters and gathering societies versus the agricultural farming. So we're not going to see all of those grains and beans and things like that. It would be things that we find more readily. What are some pros and what are some cons to this style of eating? Well, pros. It's eliminating our processed food. So we have a lot of extra chemicals in processed food, getting out the extra dyes, the extra colors, the processing, the just in general, a lot of the sugar content and things like that, because in paleo, we're eliminating a lot of the refined sugar. Now, this also gets rid of a lot of our baked goods. So yes, we can typically, you know, it can be paleo and have coconut flour or almond flour, but generally speaking, we're doing less processed, so that might not always be the case. Then we also have, um, lean grass-fed proteins that are going to be increased in this diet. This is good in the sense that we will have decreased hormones as well as decreased lectins. Now, Dr. Steve, um, Gundry, Dr. Gundry uh, talks about lectins. Gluten is a type of lectin. It's a protein on the surface of foods that can cause um, gastrointestinal disturbances. So we will have decreased lectins when we're grass-fed because corn-fed, corn would have lectins. So anything that's not grain-fed that, that will be grass-fed is gonna be better. Chickens would be pastured, meaning that they can, you know, graze and everything on all of the, all of the normal things that they eat. We're not gonna have refined sugar, which will then increase our complex carbohydrates, which are better for the body uh, and won't give us so much of the sugar spikes. We have an increase in lower glycemic index foods, better blood pressure, improved glucose tolerance, decreased triglycerides, controlled appetite, and more weight loss, according to the Mayo Clinic. Okay, so all of those are according to that Mayo Clinic article I stated earlier. So, better blood pressure, yay, <laughs> we're all looking for that. Proved glucose tolerance again, we're looking for those things. We're decreasing the, the triglycerides, which actually triglycerides are more important to look at than cholesterol. So our triglycerides being, you know, having decreased or lowering is a very good thing. Not having that constant feeling of being hungry all the time is fantastic, as well as the weight loss. Now, it's more of the earth foods, like things that would be here more naturally uh, before all of our you know, modern technology took over. This usually means healthier, typically speaking. Now, what are some cons? We have, from a cost standpoint, cost of grass-fed meat is going to be more expensive, but we have decreased legumes and lentils, so beans, 
uh, and lentils. And what this means is we don't bulk up the food as much. Now, Dr. Gundry, in his book, Plant Paradox, uh, will talk specifically about pressure cooking some of those things to eliminate the amount of lectins and making them easier to digest. So keep this in mind that there might be ways to still get the advantages of a paleo diet by doing something as simple as pressure cooking food. Some um, increased lectin foods would still be consumed on this paleo diet, not usually specifically eliminating things like tomatoes and cucumbers, anything that we are fruit-like vegetables where um, they are fruits technically, but we consider them as vegetables. So peppers and tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, usually things that have a lot of seeds on the inside. Again, pressure cooking, some of these can make them more tolerable to the gut. Some people do not have any problems with them. So if people are not having any problems digesting them, fantastic. If they're not having any symptoms, it wouldn't even be considered a con on the list. Okay. Since we're eliminating dairy, legumes, and grains, the con portion of this is just the ease of cooking. And not a lot of us are used to cooking in this manner. So it's a new way of learning how to prepare food and cook, uh, as well as some circles in the paleo will emphasize more raw fruits and vegetables, which some people's bodies may not tolerate. There's all this debate of whether or not we should cook vegetables or not. Here's my thing, don't make them mush. If you're making them mush, it's being cooked too much, okay? Uh, steaming, a light steam where there's still a little crispness to it is good. Uh, again, read labels because just because something says it's paleo approved or keto friendly doesn't mean it's healthy. So you still want to look for ingredients that could hide um, on the label, right? Um, I've done another video on how you read nutrition labels with a link to a picture so you could see more closely what it was that I was describing. Um, but we want to look for hidden ingredients. Even if something says it's paleo friendly, still please look. Okay. Um, so this was pros and cons of the paleo diet. What I would like to say is another con is that we're really not talking about caloric intake or time of eating. So this is a big deal because we can't necessarily just sit down and eat like a huge steak, you know, at one time and then eat something, you know, a piece of fruit later and then eat, you know, just because it's allowed on the diet doesn't mean that we still have to put aside all of those things that I've talked about before as being good. So for example, waiting four hours between meals, very helpful. Another one, stop snacking. Okay. If you are going to eat something, eat a protein, a complex carbohydrate, and a fat at the same time. Okay. We don't want a simple sugar, and even fruit is not considered complex. More of our vegetables, green leafy vegetables, root vegetables are considered complex, plus you, some of those do get more starch in there as well. So we want to have the ability to sustain our appetite through or, or the level of hungry we are through to the next meal. So we need to have a little bit of fat, we still need to have a little bit of protein, and we uh, need to have some carbohydrates in there as well for energy right away. So things to keep in mind that we didn't necessarily, you know, think about previously. So paleo diet, pros and cons. If you liked the video, like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, visit me at rejuminatelifechiro.com. Otherwise, I am Dr. Erin Daniel, and I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day.